So, um, so this morning we are fortunate to have with us uh, this year again, um, uh, well, for the first time this year, uh, Home Share. We have uh, Home Share now and, and Home Share Vermont, um, who are in the card room and are going to give us an update of what's going on with their program. So, Kirby. Sure. Yeah. However you'd like to do it. And um, and we'll just before you get going, we'll introduce ourselves. I'm Helen Head from South Burlington. Tom Stevens from Waterbury. Deanna Gonzalez from Minnesota. Dimitri Fields from Bennington. Vicki Strong from Albany. Uh, Brian Smith from Derby. <laughs> we met last year, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ed Reed from Faston. Mary Howard from Rowland City. Uh, Kevin Coach Christie from Hartford, Heidi Sherman from Stowe, and Tommy Walls from Ferris City. Okay. So welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Now we brought paper copies and I realized oh you do everything electronically, so I don't know if you'd like a paper copy of just some of our I information. I would. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll send it to you electronically if you'd like, but uh, I apologize. All right. I'm very old school yeah. still. So. Oh, yeah. I'm still trying to figure this thing out. <laughs> I'll put it next to my rotary telephone. <laughs> <laughs> my cell phone still has a dial on it. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, this handout's just some information of uh, the work that we've done combined with the two programs in Vermont over over the past year. Um, Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to dive right in? Sure. Okay. So um, since probably 2012, um, our home sharing programs have been using results-based accountability in cooperation with the state to think about um, how do we define success um, and where, how do we sort of move the, move the needle, so to speak. And so we're looking at, you know, how much are the organizations doing, um, how well are we doing it, and is anyone better off? And so if you take a look um, at, the, um, at the chart, if you're a visual person, you can see um, that last year the programs um, cumulatively served just shy of 300 people in home sharing matches. And this number um, does not include all of the folks that come to us for what might be called more general housing assistance, um, needing a referral, needing advice, needing uh, maybe enrolling in the program but opting not to home share or not finding a match. Um, and so, for example, in the um, Central Vermont program where um, I serve, um, even though our number of matched folks was 115 people, we actually talked to over 750 people about what their housing options in Central Vermont and beyond might be. Um, Collectively, by working with home providers, um, we're in essence making um, housing stock available in um, owner-occupied homes that otherwise would not be available on the rental market. Um, and so again, to combined, we made 206 um, affordable housing units, in essence, available um, last year. And then by nature of a home share, um, many of our home seekers are providing services in lieu of at least some of their rent, and this is what helps keep, um, keep uh, rents affordable. And so those services, if you add them all up um, over the course of the year, um, that's that, that um, 36,847 hours of service that that home provider either might not otherwise have or would have had to pay for, for example. Um, one of the ways that we think about, you know, are we doing, how well are we doing our work is that affordable, is that average rent. Um, and so, again, in Vermont, if you're out on, the, out, on the, out on the market, you might pay $750, $850 um, a month, and that's in central Vermont, again, to, to have a, an apartment. Um, but our average rent was $266 last year across all of our home shares, and you really can't beat that number. Um, so we feel really good about that. Um, the other piece of measuring sort of 
what difference home sharing makes in our communities is that both organizations do an annual outcome survey where we're checking in with matches um, to find out you know what are they how are they benefiting as a home sharing participant um, and so things like feeling safer feeling healthier worrying less feeling more financially secure um, not needing to call on friends and family as often for help those are all real real clear markers that um, that the work that we're doing is having a significant impact um, on an individual level and then um, thus on a on a having a, a community impact as well um, so that's sort of an overview, and one of the things that isn't noted on here that will be available um, in the coming months in sort of final form is that um, our scorecard, our RBA scorecard, um, will soon be available in its final version on the Department of Disabilities and Aging and Independent Living's website so you can see how the work that we're doing is contributing to the goals in the Vermont State Plan on Aging um, in the midst of the other um, programs that they're um, that they're heading up in the department. So we do get um, money from the state of Vermont uh, through the Department of Aging and uh, uh, Disabilities and um, that money is matched by some federal dollars uh, through one of the waiver programs and um, we've been very fortunate to receive that funding and, and uh, that has been critical to our success so we want to thank all legislators uh, for that. You are our largest funding source. Uh, uh, we also get funding from a variety of foundations, towns, fundraising, um, but your funding is critical to, to our success. Um, we want to let you know about some work that we've been doing on the national level uh, with the uh, National Shared Housing Resource Center, which is uh, a program that kind of went defunct for a number of years, and we've brought it back to Vermont, and we've played a leadership role in, in resurrecting that. And we're working with programs around the country to really expand home sharing opportunities. You know, home sharing programs are few and far between. and. We think we know a lot about how to run good programs, and so we're trying to help others do that. We get calls all the time uh, from people around the country, and we are in the midst of putting together a guidebook on how to start up a program. Um, and we're working with groups in California where there's a lot of activity going on, and um, they're going to be hosting a national conference out there for the first time in 10 years. The last time a national conference on home sharing was done was in Burlington 10 years ago. Uh, so they're going to take turn hosting it this time, and, and uh, we're pretty excited about the work that's happening. There's a lot of talk, whether it's universities around the country or ARP or others. So we're hoping maybe home sharing's time has come uh, in a bigger way than, than, than what it has been, at least nationally. So we're very excited about the work we've been able to provide to, to move that along and see if we can scale these programs up a little bit to, to help more people. Um, so we understand that um, that you all have a very tight schedule today, and so I'm curious if if the committee has any specific questions that they would like us to um, address. Representative Stevens, just I noticed that the average you, using your sheet for information, the average stay was <coughs> roughly 470 what four days. Um, which is 15 months or so. Um, do people just feel like they get back on their feet and then move on to the, the, the people who are sharing? I mean, I know there may be roommate issues, I mean, all, all those things that go in, but what do you find is the most, the biggest reason why people move on and uh, leave, leave their home share? Yeah, so, um, so Many of the home seekers that come to our program are using home share as a tool in transition. And so that might be they're getting an education, it might be that they're in a job transition, it might be that there's been a divorce or a split of a household, or you know, there's usually something that is sort of <coughs> knocked the wind out of their sails um, and are and so they're using it as a strategy to kind of get back um, get back on their feet. 
Um, they're also on the other side of things is that our home providers is that, um, well, regardless of what your of your age, life is unpredictable and things like um, health status change, for example, can impact the effectiveness of a home share or something that was that worked really well as a home share. Um, you have a health decline and they need more services where a home share maybe is no longer the most appropriate um, resource. So there's a number there's a number of reasons, contributing reasons on both sides. Um, and then the other kind of piece is that um, is that while this is the, the average for both programs, that isn't to say that both programs have um, a large number of folks who have been doing home sharing for, been in the same home share for five to 10, you have a really long one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, so, so longer home shares do happen, those long-term relationships. And then the last thing that I'll say is that, um, Home providers will often come to us for successive home shares. So exam for example, I've got a gal in, in East Montpelier. She's been home sharing for close to 10 years now, but over those 10 years, she's had four different matches. So it's, it's been a long-term strategy for her. It's just, it's not captured in that number. Do you use, um, or do you work at all with, with AmeriCorps people who come in or people who are looking for inexpensive places that are going to be here for a year? <clears throat> I mean, absolutely. Um, so um, we are, for example, our very first AmeriCorps member um, at this point four years, four years ago came to us and was able to relocate from Pennsylvania to Central Vermont to serve at Home Share now by using our program for housing. Um, there are a number of current AmeriCorps members through BHCB who are currently using the program. Um, I can think of I can think of two off the top of my head um, that are currently using the program. Um, so there are certainly a number of young people who are looking to, whether it's relocate for AmeriCorps, for school, um, leave their parents' house for the first time, we see a, a small percentage of those. And, and Burlington offers, has a slightly different, um, you have the college community that is there, so yeah. you might be able to speak to that as yeah. well. Portland. You know, it is a little bit harder when people are moving here from away. We have typically a two-week trial period, so that any match that happens, uh, both parties get to sort of try it out for typically two weeks before they make a final commitment to each other. So that means the person who moves in has to have a place to go back to. Um, and about 10% of our matches decide not to go forward in the trial period, but 90% do. But that's a real comfort to people, especially if you haven't shared your home with a stranger before, getting the chance to sort of try it out first and make sure it feels right. Because people are very reluctant to share their home. You know, issues of privacy, uh, concerns about compatibility, uh, and safety and security are, 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 are barriers to getting people to consider sharing their homes. Mm -hmm. So anything we can do to try to make it easier. So sometimes our, our process doesn't work for those folks that are coming from afar. Um, if they don't have a place locally that they could sort of do live while there's a trial period. And people want to meet people. You don't want to Skype and look at somebody who's out in Colorado and then decide, oh yeah, I'll have them move in. You want to check them out in person. You know, <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. Representative Smith. Thank you. Uh, we, we spoke last year about this, and I recall it now. I've got these little arrows that show where the Northeast Kingdom is. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and uh, you, we had talked about you spreading into the Northeast Kingdom. You can keep that. Okay. And keep those arrows. Yep. That's Newport, and that's Island Pond, yep. and that's Lindenville, or St. Johnsbury. <laughs> yep. If you have the opportunity, your services would be appreciated in the kingdom. Yeah. I just spoke to someone yesterday from um, who was calling for her mom in St. Johnsbury, um, and um, so we know we know anecdotally, and we have some, and we have the best data that we can as far as reporting the number of calls that we get from the Northeast Kingdom asking if we can if we can um, expand our service area. Um, the the only update that I can give you is that I do know that the folks that are working on, co on collective impact 
out of St. John's Ferry, um, sort of out of the hospital there, which includes a whole number of players, right? It includes people who are thinking about housing, who are thinking about food, who are thinking about poverty, healthcare, opioids. Um, they're really thinking big picture. And I know that home sharing is on their list of strategies that they'd like to consider as a community. Um, that's sort of a slow process, a thoughtful process, um, but I do know that it's, on, um, that it's on their list and they've reached out to us to say, hey, when the time is right, can you come and talk to us about what it would take to start a program in, that's sort of focused in St. Jay, or be, live in St. Jay. Could I give you a card so you, you yeah. could have someone call me and I'll try to hook you up with somebody in Newport? Yeah, I'll, um, and I'll connect um, your information also with the, the folks you. that I've been talking to. Yeah, please, please keep it. But, um, Thank you, Ryan. We do want to, you know, it would be great if Vermont is actually the first state in the country to have home sharing available everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, Amazing. And, it's, you know, it's a capacity and a funding issue. Um, and the way we've worked, you know, Home Share Now started with our help in the Barry area because there was a local group of volunteers who were really committed to doing this and there was a sponsoring organization, the Agency on Aging, that said, okay, we'll take it on for the first uh, five or six years. So, you know, that's what we really need in these other communities is we need a strong sponsoring organization and we need a group of volunteers that are willing to just get it off the ground. I am talking with some folks down in the Brattleboro area. I'm hoping that you know there's some maybe some activity happening down there. We'll see. Um, but it is it is something that we're we're committed to. But we just can't spread ourselves. You know you can't serve that from Barry. You know you got to have a local Fair presence. Uh, Representative Starr, did you have one? Yeah. Okay. And then Representative. Green. So I have tenders bought my heart for home share. I think it's an awesome opportunity for a lot of reasons, but. Um, I'll tell you a little story in a minute, but um, I'd like to know the people who do come into the home, uh, basically they're, they're not required to have any certain skills of care for the elderly. It's mostly just that their presence in the home maybe help with some odds and ends. Is that kind of how it is then? Do I have that yeah, right? Yeah, so there's yeah. no personal care, there's no medical mm -hmm. care, um, it's not caregiving, um, it's really you know, companionship and the types of services. It's really whatever two people kind of agree on, right? Mm -hmm. um, so the services are more about helping prepare a meal or, or helping with the yard work or walking the dog or, you know, or those types of things. Yeah, a roommate, a helpful roommate. Yeah. You know, it's not yeah. a roommate uh, that goes, you know, you go your way, they go theirs. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's hopefully more about a friendship and, and uh, helping each other kind of thing. Yeah. Well, there's another representative here in the building, Representative Marcia Gardner, um, and her father-in-law and my mother-in-law were college sweethearts. <laughs> I mean, like, and they met at UVM however many years ago, 75, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but he re reconnected with her, and he was in a home share environment, but he had people in his home. Mm -hmm. He reconnected with her in their 80s, and she actually came and lived in the home with, with him and these two home share folks, and we're able to have six months together before their health failed. But just mm -hmm. to share that companionship they had couldn't have happened if it wasn't a home share environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these people were so gracious. They took them on little rides and took them out to eat. <laughs> that was a little romance going on there. <laughs> well, and what's yeah. really <laughs> nice about that, Vicki, is that that story really is what encapsulates the 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 statistic that about half of half of the home providers that we serve would be would have been unable to sort of live the life that they wanted to or stay in their home safely if it hadn't been for their home share. Right. And that's really that's the story that is the story behind uh, that statistic. That's how I got introduced to home share, and I, I was just thrilled. And it also gave us as family a lot of peace. So it's extended family right. touches. Yes. And then we didn't have to do all that, um, you know so much maintenance in their lives. They were lovely people and cared for them wonderfully. Yeah. And adult children are often, or play a really important role in all of this, is that you know there are a number of home providers that come to us because their adult children have said, we care about you, we love you, we're worried about you. It would make us feel so much better if we just knew that someone else was around. Um, and that's a real, um, that's a, a very strong sort of point of referral 
place for our programs is having those adult children, those care, those family caregivers, mm -hmm. um, bring it to the table as an as an option. Right, and sometimes. The immediate family aren't often as patient, and <laughs> can be true. There's different dynamics there. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Representative Reed. Um, thank you. Uh, so, is this just like individuals have to get in touch with you, or do you work with um, like local planning commissions or, or chambers? I guess I'm saying that my district it's, it's five towns, small towns, and it's um. Do, 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 you know, we have a planning district that's very involved in like, housing stuff. And so do you work directly with them or do individuals get in touch with you directly? Or if I was to take this back and say, this, you know, I think judging from the map, we have some use of it, but probably not as much as it could be. Mm -hmm. And you're in phase then? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so we've actually been at the table at the Mad River Valley Housing Council, yeah. um, and so we're on those agendas. We get those um, my, um, overlapping with um, with Josh yeah, okay. um, Schwartz. So home sharing is a strategy that we helped um, put them. They inserted it into their housing plan as one of the as one of the strategies that the Mad River Valley could look at. Um, we have done some um, through the council, like talking with Sugarbush about okay, seasonal employees and. Um, what kind of service can we provide? Um, so we actually tried a little pilot in Sugarbush where um, we actually worked with Green Mountain Transit who bring in seasonal drive, who have seasonal drivers that run up and down the mountain and were look, that need affordable housing. And so we actually worked out a way to kind of expedite the process for various reasons, background checks and stuff that were done by Green Mountain Transit means that we didn't have to do them um, and sort of do it in partnership. And in the end, it ended up working for one individual um, in this it's sort of little little trial pilot phase. But we are really interested in what are those community partnerships that um, who are the right people to connect with that have constituents that might be able to benefit from the program either as home providers or home seekers and can we work collaborative, collaboratively, collaboratively with them. Um, another version of that is we're in, currently in conversation with the Vermont College of Fine Arts. Um, so they have grad students that come in, they don't have dorm space for their, um, for their adult students and so can we work in partnership from a marketing standpoint to bring more home providers to the table who might like the idea of hosting a grad student through our program, um, which then just opens up a whole new home provider pool. So there is a lot of benefit to working in Okay, so you are working with, with Josh now. Yeah, okay. yep, the whole economic summit that happened a few years ago, we were part of that as well. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> It's a long time ago, I can't remember a lot. <laughs> I, part of that too. I was there. Yeah, so was I. <laughs> there was a lot of people there, that was good. Yeah. Yeah, and speaking a long time ago, in full disclosure, I was the director of Project Home, uh, the pre well, the program that became Home Share from 86 to 98, and then Kirby came in in 90, and it's really, it's taken off. Um, in great life. So. 20 years. Hmm? 20 years. Almost 20, right now 20 years that you've been there. Yeah, close. Like 2000 I started. <laughs> yeah. 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 Great program. So, yeah. And they've yeah. <laughs> um, I did, okay. I did want to mention that um, I know you have a bill before you, I think, on short term rentals and Airbnb. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. We do. I would just sort of just put my two cents in a little bit there. It's not my organization's position, it's my personal mm -hmm. uh, insights. But um, we are seeing, you know, people looking at both home sharing and Airbnb as which do I want to do? And they're two different things. But we have had, you know, what I would say, some people sort of, who might have home shared think about doing Airbnb instead. Um, and, um, and I think it does have an effect on the housing market. You know, we know of people that have taken... Um, apartments and units off the market and put them into Airbnb and and I think it I love Airbnb but it, you know it does have an effect on the on the rental housing market and and um, I think it should be regulated to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank 
Thank you. Thank so you. You're, you're in the card room today? We're in the card room. Will you be on the floor? We have candies. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know that we're on the floor. We'll, okay. we'll come and we'll watch there, if you're there and say hello. Come and visit if you Okay, there. we will. Okay. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Thank you.